All right, the first one is the obvious one. Yamato gun sound is fantastic. How did Wargaming come up with this sound? Is it in any way historically accurate? Probably not, but who cares? The sound is so unique and amazing. It's really something you don't think about in video games, but good sound design really immerses you into the battle, and Yamato is peak when it comes to this. Everyone is so concerned with what's the new ship, what's the meta, when are submarines coming, when they should maybe take a second to be a casual warships player. Take Yamato out of port, crank up the volume, and enjoy. Next up is overmatch potential. It's the biggest gimmick of this aging battleship. These massive 460mm guns can overmatch the most common armor threshold in the game. 32mm is what you're going to find on most ordinary battleship noses, except Gangoot. Gangoot Bow is pure stellenium and it haunts Yamato's dreams, but aside from that and GK's Icebreaker, Yamato can smash through all other legendary tier battleship noses, and it can do it often because of the reload. You'd think these massive guns would have a longer reload time than Montana GK or other smaller caliber guns, right? No. 30 seconds base, the same as the other battleships, and even with a full accuracy setup, Yamato can still throw these shells out in less than 25 seconds. So overmatch plus reload is another great reason to play Yamato. The next reason to play Yamato is because it's just so easy. The skill floor for Yamato is low. It's a great ship for noobs and just a relaxing ship for veterans to play as well. What makes it so easy is, one, it has the longest main battery range for any legendary tier battleship. Fun fact, if you maxed out Fisher and Megatron and threw them both on there, the shells could reach 21 kilometers. Now, this makes it easy to hit crossfire shots at ranges enemies may not expect, and look, I wouldn't recommend playing from that far out of the battle all the time, but it can come in handy, and it helps lower the risk of newer players getting into danger. Also, because of the turret layout, this is a very noob-friendly battleship. If you're learning the art of moving your battleship still, you could play most of the time bow in, where most of your firepower is up front. And hey, I don't recommend that all the time, but it can work. Other battleships like Borgogna, Conqueror, Montana, tempt new players into firing all of their guns, and it can lead them to opening their broadside up for a paddling. Next up is because Yamato is tanky. I know, I know. Yamato has a coffin citadel that sits out of the water higher than a lifeguard tower, but look, if you're angling her correctly and playing smart, it's still a tough ship to sink. 55% torpedo reduction, it's one of the best in the game, so there's a little bit of noob protection there from destroyers. Tired of your turrets getting knocked out? Yamato doesn't really have that problem with 650mm of front plate action. And you might say, well Durka, what about the HE spam? 57 millimeters of deck armor and also learn how to position better but yamato can be a tanky battleship in the right hands even with all the new legendary tier battleships that have come into the game 90,000 hp is still the second highest the next reason is because yamato is still very accurate with a 1.8 sigma and u.s battleship dispersion ellipses is a pretty accurate battleship Yamato may be the only IJN BB that has USN dispersion ellipses in World of Warship Legends. In layman's terms, which is really all I have the energy for anymore, Japanese battleships are usually more accurate at 9 kilometers and above, while American battleships are more accurate 9 kilometers and below. You could view this as a good or a bad thing, I suppose, but with Legends having closer range engagements than on PC, I think having the USN dispersion is pretty helpful. Either way though, the Yamato always seems to perform pretty well in the accuracy department. Next up, if you hit what you're aiming at even at super long ranges, the shells are so heavy they still smash through a ton of armor. 490mm at 21 kilometers. it's about the best in the game. Republic is close, but Yamato wins at extreme ranges. Also, did I mention these shells have the second highest damage per shell in game? Only Georgia shells deal more damage. And since we're on the subject, the HE shells are no slouch and can hit for 7300 damage apiece. 
Now, I would almost never shoot HE and Yamato unless a destroyer is coming after you, but hey, if you're facing one of them and they do rush you, the HE can end them in a single salvo. Next up, and this might not pertain to you if you're a free-to-play player, but Arpeggio has come back with two new IJN battleship commanders, Musashi and Yamato, and it's breathed some new life into Japanese battleship play. Both of them are great in their own way. The clear winner in value seems to be Arpeggio Yamato for her use as an inspiration. I mean, who doesn't want to cut their traverse time down and improve dispersion? Sign me up. On my Yamato, for example, turret traverse dropped from 53 seconds to 32 seconds. Now the nerds out there would say, if you're a good battleship player, you're going to have your turrets facing the correct way. Well, I'm not a good battleship player, so I want this crutch, thank you very much. Having a long, slow turret crawl is pretty annoying and it takes some of the joy out of battleship play, so I really enjoy this commander. As an inspiration, you could throw it on literally any battleship in your port, including brawling battleships, for cruiser-like turret troopers. On top of all that, her skills are very good. The question is though, are they better than Musashi's? And the big argument here is that Yamato overpins a lot because these shells are massive. Cruisers can get away with being devstruck. The Musashi commander will lower the risk of overpins when your spotter plane is up. And hey, I see this as being pretty strong. Look at my opening salvo against the Wusta. Four or five overpins. Had I had the Musashi commander on there and the spotter plane up, we probably could have deleted this dude from the start. Personally though, my money is still probably on Yamato. I just like the bang for the buck. 5,000 doubloons and an inspiration for all of your battleships sounds fantastic. If you're looking for a more in-depth look at the whole Arpeggio collab, check out the video pinned below. But either way, these two new commanders give some good reason to revisit Yamato. And with that, do me a favor and hit the like button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future content. This is Durka signing off. See ya.